I think there's a genuine excitement. You know, uh, anytime you get into a second year in a system, um, the kids seem to have a, a new uh, a new perspective on things. You know, they're not thinking as much or shouldn't be. Um, you've got a lot of kids coming back that played a lot of meaningful snaps last year. So um, the excitement, um, the level of uh, understanding, I think, is that a, is that. Uh, you know, usually first year in, in any system, you know, you're kind of just scratching the surface. Kids are still a little robotic, hopefully by the end of the year. And thankfully they had the uh, the bowl game, you know, but usually bowl game practice, um, you get those extra 15 practices and then you have a bowl opportunity that that kind of doubles up on spring. You know, we lost spring this year, um, you know, which was a disappointment um, from a from an install perspective, but, um, you know, summer workouts, the zoom meetings, um, those type of things, um, you know, help get you kind of back up to speed. But, um, you know, I think the, the biggest thing that, that I see out there is the enthusiasm, um, and, the, the level of understanding these kids have, uh, in year two. Um, I've been real happy with. Corey, before we get into the, the room a little bit, uh, one thing I want to ask you about is just kind of your background and uh, sure. you know, coming from Hawaii, uh, yep. defensive coordinator out there. I mean, mm -hmm. and you've worked with Coach Freeze before as well, but being yeah. at D.C. and yeah. having the experience with Coach Freeze, I mean, does that really help you to be able to kind of see the whole picture here, not just the safety room? Sure. No, I mean, you know, you always have, kind of have a holistic approach when you look at things. Um, but you know, here, I mean, it's been, uh, you know, it's been, uh, it's been really good with the defensive staff. Um, you know, I've known Scott for a long time, um, you know, clear back to our days at Arkansas state when, when we were with coach freeze and, uh, and, and got to know Scott, uh, you know, he was coaching at another institution there in state. And so we would come and visit and, uh, had an opportunity to stay in contact. You know, last year we played, um, uh, we played, uh, New Mexico, you know, they were in our league. And I know, uh, I know, uh, y'all played them here and had a long conversation with Scott. Kind of after that game, they did a really nice job defensively, schematically on them. And then, uh, and so th there's a lot of carryovers in, in terms of the systems uh, that we've run uh, coming up. And so there's a good familiarity. You know, the biggest thing that, that that I need to do as a as an as a coach here is just learn the terminology. You know, it's it's. Uh, um, the pieces of the puzzle are all very, very similar. I mean, system wise, it's just, you know, kind of you call it apple, I call it orange, you know. And so that, that's been tough, tough on me because I've been in this system for so long uh, just to learn different names. But uh, but the teaching progressions, you know, the X's and O's, uh, the knowledge standpoint, it's all basically a very similar system. So that transition has been has been really good. Um, Obviously, not really a transition, uh, you know, coming back working for uh, for coach, uh, you know, we've been together for a long time, uh, you know, clear back to our days as, as position coaches at Arkansas State. And then, you know, he became the head coach and, and had a chance to to see what his program is like and, and to see uh, uh, how he molds uh, the staff and, and, and the chemistry uh, that's involved within the staff and, and obviously the cohesion uh, with the players. Um, you know, that, that was really neat to see back at Arkansas State. And then when we went to Ole Miss, being able to see that again um, and the success that we had. I mean, there's a lot of great memories um, that I have, uh, you know, as, as an assistant coach working for, for Hugh. And so the opportunity to come back, I mean, for our family, um, you know, my wife uh, knows half of these wives. You know, it's, it's a rare situation as a college coach when you walk in and you, you fly, you know, you, you move your family, you know, 5,000 miles away across the country. Uh, to be able to walk in on day one and know, you know, more than half the people in the building. Uh, when your kids and your wife comes up in, into the building, you know, that, that they that they know everybody uh, have spent uh, a lot of years. You know, we spent uh, the five years together at Ole Miss and then uh, the two at Arkansas State with Coach and with, with Coach Harris and Coach Johnson. I mean, you know, the, the list goes on and on. A lot of the a lot of the younger coaches uh, are still here and, you know, they have different roles, but um, we've known them a long time. So it kind of is, um, you know, going home for me, Hawaii wise was actually going home. You know, I'm born and raised there and coming back to here to Liberty with you is it's, it's another way of just kind of coming home. So it's been it's been a real easy transition. Yeah, well, I mean, you you mentioned it right there going 5000 miles, you know, away from from your home growing up. But, yeah. you know, the transition uh, coming back. I mean, I guess if, if not for Coach Freeze, you, you probably don't wind up at a, at a place like Liberty. But uh, <laughs> yeah, 
uh, kind of give us an idea of of what um, of what that that's been like, just moving to Virginia and just getting uh, familiar with the Lynchburg area. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's good to be back in the South. I don't know if they really consider this the South, uh, Mid Atlantic. I guess I don't know what what this is considered, but uh, you know, just kind of getting the lay of the land. You know, we really enjoyed our time. Um, you know, we were out west for basically our whole career. You know, whether it's Montana or Arizona, we were there for a long time in California. Um, you know, playing and coaching and then uh, having the opportunity to go to Arkansas uh, and kind of raise our girls um, in, in the South. It was kind of, you know, at first, you know, you don't know what that is. You know, you kind of way out of your comfort zone, you know, moving from Arizona and California and those type of uh, th that type of setting uh, to Arkansas. But wow, what a blessing. You know, it's been uh, the pace is a lot slower, um, you know, in this region uh, family. It's it's very similar to as it is in the islands. I mean, family is very important. You know, faith is very important um, in this area. And so it is uh, geographically it's it's a ways away from our island home. But uh, just in terms of what we're used to, um, the social norms, uh, if you will, I mean, it's it's very similar. So, I mean, it's, it's a very comfortable feeling being back in this region and, you know, just being out and exploring, you know, I mean, it's really neat. Um, you know, Charlotte's one of my favorite towns, uh, recruited that area when we were at Ole Miss. And, and uh, now we can jump in the car and drive and go there. Uh, we love the D.C. area and, um, you know, haven't been up to New York, but I understand that's like a six, seven hour drive. And so. Um, you know, I think it gives you uh, gives family a little different perspective living in, in, in this part of the country. But always, uh, you know, we consider this the mainland, right? If you're born and raised on island, you know, the mainland is, is uh, uh, the benefits of living on the mainland is, is that you can uh, explore and, and uh, really, uh, really expand, you know, your cultural norms. And, and uh, we look at it as an educational experience. Uh, had the opportunity to have my daughters uh, back here. My oldest uh, actually uh, works and, and lives in Hollywood and she works, uh, is re working remotely. Um, and so we had an opportunity to get her out here for a little bit of time this summer. And then my youngest is a senior at Ole Miss. And so, you know, with the COVID, um, she's been up here for almost six months. So what a blessing it's been, you know, and, and being able to explore this new region as a family and and those are times that, you know, we'll look back on 2020 and go, you know, there was so much craziness and disruption. But, uh, you know, what a blessing it was also to, to be able to recoup some of this family time. And, and that's, that's so abnormal for coaches. You know, at this time, I mean, we're usually going, you know, crazy. And, and you don't really pick your head up until, uh, until December. And then you off-season recruiting and that. And so um, – we look at it as really a blessing to be here in, in, in Lynchburg, uh, very, uh, very, very nice community, getting a chance to get to some of the restaurants in downtown and, and uh, really, we're really happy with uh, with the town so far. Switching over to football a bit uh, with the season starting a little later than nor than the September 5th uh, scheduled opener, has that helped? since you lost a lot of spring practice to get more acclimated with these guys and did the did the virtual meetings help during workouts to get a chance to know these guys and be better prepared for them when you got to training camp yeah no i think uh i think the the moving the season back you know anytime you have more time to prepare i mean it's a it's a positive i think you have to weigh that um with the um the type of time that you have and I think coach freeze has done a nice job of of really restructuring what we're doing in fall camp because the the, the first game is so far away is is we're in camp mode but we're still kind of in teach mode and so normally you know mid-august I mean you've already had a couple of scrimmages and you're kind of in the meat of two days of the grind of it and he's done a great job of really uh, taking care of these players um, we've, we've gotten some really good work in on the grass and then, uh, you know, a lot of walkthrough time. And so really doing a good job of, of taking a holistic approach to this thing and, and, um, and taking care of the players in terms of mental fatigue, because, it, you know, if, if you jump in that thing and grind them, you know, it's, it's not meant to grind somebody for six weeks and then come in fresh for a season. So, um, you know, this season is going to be about, um, you know, uh, making your way through uh you know uncharted times and, and i think he's done a really nice job from a leadership perspective from a planning perspective in terms of what we're asking of the kids uh to get you know to live in both worlds you know to be able to get the work that we need to do from a physical standpoint uh as well as you know keep the physicality off of them and, and make sure that we're taking care of them mentally so 
To answer your question, I mean, um, you know, with the start date moving back, I think it's been great. And uh, I think the way that we are going about doing it, I think, has been excellent. So, so yeah, it's, it's been beneficial. Uh, you, since it's your first year on the staff, you've, um, you know, since you've been there on campus and, and since you were hired, how much time do you spend in film review trying to learn the players in your room? And then also with uh, Coach Simons, the defensive coordinator, you know, he had your room last year. How mm -hmm. much was that in conversations with him, just trying to learn your players and your personnel? Yeah, I mean, really uh, got here in February and, and that whole time, um, you know, tons of film review. Um, tons of one-on-one -on -one time, um, you know, with Scott and then the defensive staff, really just that, that challenge was just learning the language. You know, like I said, the system is very, very similar to what we've done. Uh, and so just learning what they call things and why they call things. And just, like I said, just learning the language, uh, was the biggest thing. And then, and then trying to, uh, uh, in the winter workouts that we had, you know, trying to get around the players, you know, you watch them on tape, um, you get a feel for them, and then you get a chance to go out there and watch them in person. Uh, you know, all of those things kind of lend you to understand how kids move, you know, what type of athlete they are. And then, and then you get them in the, in the video room, in the film room, and then you kind of understand how they process, different ways they process. Are they tactile learners? Are they, are they having to do it on their own? You know, those are things that, that we've kind of, um, you know, tried to shape it. Uh, every room is different. You know, last year at Hawaii, we had kids that, you know, really struggled uh, learning in a classroom setting. So everything was a walkthrough. You know, the more they could do, you know, the better. And these kids, I think, are kind of, uh, they live in both worlds where, you know, you can talk about concepts on a board and they, they have a pretty good understanding. And so with, with that regard, you know, the Zoom meetings were pretty good for us, where I don't know that the Zoom meetings you know, at some other places would have been as useful because kids, those kids just didn't learn that way. So, um, but, but I'm pretty comfortable with the way our kids uh, process. Like I said, second year in the system, they have a little bit better understanding than, you know, I couldn't imagine, you know, being, um, being in a transition year coming in as a new staff, you know, in this situation where, you know, the only thing you are is learning, you know, virtually, I think that'd be really hard. And so, Having a lot of kids that have played last year in the system, they understand it. They have, they already have a pretty good understanding of it. You know, you could kind of go to the next step, if you will, and and you know, learn, you know, virtually or learn, you know, not, not having to do walkthroughs, which I think are so important for kids. And so that's been a big help for us. Um, you know, uh, kind of both of us learning the same thing. You know, me learning what the language is, and and the kids learning, you know, how I coach things a little different. Um, has been awesome, but uh, but together, I mean, it's been a really good experience. Tell me about uh, uh, Javon Scruggs and just your early impressions of him and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how much of a leader he's uh, been or, you know, what what are some of the things that have impressed you or, or things that you want to see him work on? Sure. Um, you know, I think you hit it right on the head. I mean, uh, he's kind of the alpha wolf in the, in the room, you know. He's still a young kid. You know, you'd think he'd be like a fifth-year senior. Um, but he, he has that mentality um, that, that you want. You want others to emulate. He does a great job of, uh, of leading by example, uh, but he's also not afraid to be a kid that, that's verbal also. You know, hey, this is not what, the way we're doing things. He's one of those guys that, you know, kind of helps, uh, you know, as a bell, call, uh, bell cow uh, in terms of our standard and, and, and how we go about meetings, you know, what the expectations are. And so I've been really happy with, with his leadership um, thus far uh, on the field. I mean, you know, he, he's a kid that I noticed, uh, you know, clear back to last year when we were watching, we we're watching Liberty on tape preparing for, for New Mexico and even BYU. And, and we played both those teams. And so he was a guy that kind of stuck out as a, he was different, you know, than some of the other guys. Um, and so I was anxious to get the chance to know him and, 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 and uh, it's been great, you know, working with him thus far. And, and so expectations are pretty high for him moving forward. and. And uh, and kind of, you know, what, what our mentality is and, and how we're running that room. So been real happy with him and, uh, you know, uh, just getting him back out there, uh, working through, um, you know, some bumps and bruises in terms of the off season has been really good and, and uh, anxious to get him back out there on, on the grass. And a lot of fans want to know about Tim Kidd Glass. Uh, yeah. You know what you've been able to see from him so far. And anytime you get an, a, a Power Five transfer in, everyone's asking questions. So uh, how's how's he looked up to this point? 
Yeah, he's been good. You know, um, the uh, I think in the off season he did a pretty good job of learning the system. You know, I know he was here last fall, kind of, you know, on the look team, on the scout team there, and, and uh, not being eligible and, and uh, coming in uh, was pretty dialed in in the meetings. I think he's got a uh, a good understanding. You know, as a as a fifth year player, you know, this is his last shot, and so. I think he's done a really nice job of uh, seizing the opportunity, um, you know, spending extra time, you know, virtually, um, you know, learning the system, getting to where I think he's pretty comfortable uh, being vocal. I thought he was he was semi vocal in the spring and really noticed um, his understanding, take it to another level where he could really be, you know, we, we talk about being a multiplier, guys that are out there being able to affect others, you know, and, and in a positive or a negative sense. And, and his communication has really helped, you know, some of the development of some of our younger corners, uh, just being, you know, being comfortable with what they're seeing, you know, we're a check defense. And so those guys, uh, we rely on those guys being uh, pretty vocal in terms of, you know, the picture that they're seeing and what we're getting into, uh, you know, one concept to another. And so I've um, been real happy with Tim and and Javon and, and Ben, I mean, those guys, um, you know, played a lot of snaps and they, uh, they're multipliers for us and they help everybody play a little faster because they're able to, to verbalize things uh, that maybe some of the younger players don't. You hit on Ben Alexander, a former walk-on, um, and who got the start in the Cure Bowl. How's he looked so far? And is is he a guy who at free safety really helps this defense? Yeah, no, I think Ben is a guy that uh, – we have him slotted at the free. I mean, he's played uh, he's played the weak safety or the rover position for us. Uh, he's a guy that can play either either position. And and like I said, with him, I mean, he is such a vocal guy. Um, he uh, he has a, a very good understanding of the system. And so, you know, he's a guy that is going to be allowed to compete for both of those positions and um, has had a really good off season. Uh, you know, again, I have a hard time giving you perspective in regards to the improvement because I've only seen him since I've been here. But uh, since I've been here, um, you know, he moves well. Uh, he's a longer guy. Uh, watching him on tape, he plays with good physicality in that in that uh, bowl game. I think he did a nice job of showing up in the run game and, and made some plays in the pass game. So uh, excited to see uh, his continued development. You've also got two JUCO transfers and Jawan Treadwell and Marcus Haskins. We've heard Coach Freeze talk highly about them already. Yeah. Uh, what are some things you've seen out of them so far in camp, and, and how do you see them fitting in in your safety room this year? Yeah, I think the thing that, that both of those guys uh, uh, bring to the table is the athleticism. Um, you know, they're both uh, combo type players. I think Marcus has had a, uh, uh, in his background, has played corner. Um, and so anytime you've been out there on the island and, and now you're coming in closer to the ball, you know, uh, from a skill standpoint, change of direction, athleticism, I mean, he's excellent. Um, anxious to, to see what he looks like, you know, in some of the run type situations. Uh, I saw what he did in junior college from that perspective. I, I have high expectations for what he can do uh, for us. Uh, plays the ball very, very well. Um, you know, I think he's got an uncanny ability, um, you know, to, to go get the ball, locate the ball, track the ball. I think that's one of the, the better things that he does. And then athletically, I mean, you know, has that corner background where he moves like a guy that can play out on the perimeter. Um, uh, Treadwell is a kid that, that is similar, you know, has a background as more of a cover guy. Um, and has assimilated into our system very well at the strong safety position. Uh, he's a multi-positional guy where he's played strong. We played him at the free safety position in the spring. Um, and I think the thing that those two bring uh, to the table immediately is the, um, is the, um, the, the athleticism that, that maybe, uh, you know, we look to try to continue to grow and continue to recruit uh, into, the, into that room. But, uh, but good takes, both of them, uh, junior college-wise. You're always worried, you know, ju usually junior college, you know, if you're hitting 50%, you know, you're probably right where you're going to be. And I think that both those guys are guys that uh, that were did, they did a good job evaluating through the evaluation process, and uh, those guys are, are as billed right now. The rover position lost a good bit because Elijah Benton last year, and I'm sure you saw him on tape, uh, yeah. played virtually all the snaps there. Um, how is that rover position looking? Uh, in your room. Yeah. So uh, we have Tim uh, over there uh, playing that position for us. Uh, you know, Ben has played that position in games. He's played free and rover. 
uh, for us. Um, Micah uh, Glaze is a kid that's played snaps there at Rover, and we're leaving him there. Um, and then we're moving some guys around, trying to find out, you know, what pieces of the puzzle they are. You know, uh, Drum Jolly's a kid that's played uh, in the spring. He was playing uh, over to the field, and he knows that position, trying to teach him uh, the boundary position or the rover position. Those, those positions are basically sisters, you know. I mean, the rule structure and how we set it up, it's the same. Uh, so if you know one position, you know the other. So that's been a, a pretty good transition and trying to find a home for Jerome uh, to where he feels like, um, you know, he can, he can get out and play. And, and, I, and I'm, I've been happy with what we've seen out of him. And so um, really those three guys, um, you know, have been playing that position and, and uh, you know, look for, uh, look for continued growth at that position. Uh, anxious to see what the competition looks like as we progress through camp. All right, guys, anything else? Hey, Nick, I got one more. Just wanted to ask about um, Isaac Steele. He's a guy that um, you know saw the field a lot two years ago, then battled injuries a lot last season. Um, how's he looking so far in camp? Is he healthy? Yeah, Isaac is your typical fifth-year senior, you know, I mean, that's played a lot uh, snaps. I mean, he has a very good understanding of all three positions, and he's kind of a Swiss Army knife. Uh, he was a guy. Uh, one of the days that we came out uh, in the spring, I mean, we had a kid go down and just moved him over to another position, and he picked it up and, and understood it. So, those are the things that you you kind of get when you have a veteran team, uh, veteran players, uh, especially a guy like Isaac that's played a lot of meaningful snaps. You know, I mean, nothing is really new. He understands the game at a conceptual level. So. It's just a matter of plugging him and playing him. Um, we're giving him an opportunity to try to, you know, compete at the at the free safety position, you know, which he he deserves that opportunity to compete for that spot. But uh, holistically, he brings uh, understanding at all three of the safety positions, which uh, which gives you, uh, you know, something that you're going to need, especially in these times with, uh, you know, the COVID and not knowing how this thing goes down and. You know, heck, uh, one week you could be, um, you know, at half strength and you're going to need guys, um, you know, dual trained. And so that's been a charge for us. This camp is, you know, creating dual roles for guys and and making sure that they not only understand their position, but another and, and given the opportunity that we can play our best 11 guys. And and Isaac brings uh, the mentality that we're looking for um, from a football IQ and uh, anxious to see him as he continues to progress this uh, this camp.